basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Talk. Jersey Joe here again. And, man, there are some awkward moments in life. We all have them. But, again, last night there was another one. Uh, the NBA Summer League is happening right now. Certainly haven't watched as much of it as I did last summer. Last summer, really, I needed to see Andrew Wiggins. I really wanted to get a good look at him. So I really didn't miss one of his games in the Summer League. This summer, haven't really seen it as much. But we'll try to get to it now. But, I mean, Man, the other night, the George Carl and DeMarcus Cousins, I mean, George Carl comes up to Cousins, and man, the handshake just could not have been more awkward. I'm sure if you go anywhere right now, Bleach Report, ESPN, it's, it's somewhere easy to find. But I mean, it, it's that relationship is just so weird, and I think the... the the Sacramento Kings as an organization, it just they really make you scratch your head. There, there are so many different reports that come out around them. And I think in the NBA, there are patterns in the NBA. There, there just are. There are patterns of losing. There are patterns of organizations who get it, and there are the organizations who don't get it. The Miami Heat, they get how to win. They're the organizations that just draft well, have smart guys, have smart people, progressive, know what it takes, know how to do it. The Kings are one of those ones where, man, they've just been, it's been so long. I mean, we see it constantly. There are teams that are consistently in those top six NBA draft picks. The Kings are always there, and I got to be honest, I think they're going to be in the same spot. I don't know. It's just such a weird group. I mean, DeMarcus Cousins, we thought he's gone. He's still there. Now, the one guy they bring in now, they bring in Rondo on a one-year deal. And obviously, Rondo's stock could have never been lower with the little, with the drama that he pulled in, in Dallas. And I'll be, I've never been a Rondo fan. I mean, before, after his injury, he was just never the same player. And, and even before that... He had his moments, but I just, for my point guard cannot be a diva. That's one of those positions. There, there are positions in sports where I just, I can't negotiate. I can't have you be a diva in point guard, quarterback, point, positions like that. There's no wiggle room. You have to be with it. You can't be a problem. You can't cause trouble. Rondo is one of those guys, and I cannot have that with my point guard. Now, you're going to pair Rondo with a guy like DeMarcus Cousins. And again, I like DeMarcus Cousins. I think DeMarcus Cousins is arguably the best center in the NBA. The numbers he puts up are outstanding, incredible. But they don't translate to wins. They're, th they're putting up numbers in the NBA, and there's putting up numbers in translating to wins. Carmelo puts up a lot of numbers. Do they translate to wins? No. There's a big drop-off and jump in the NBA between just being a guy who puts up the numbers and being a guy who actually wins because of those numbers. DeMarcus Cousins is a guy where that hasn't happened, and it's the same thing with guys like Carmelo Anthony. But, man, the Kings, it's such a difficult situation because you have a guy like George Carl in there, and obviously, I mean, I don't know, and I don't think anybody has official word about him trying to f force uh, Cousins, trying to force a trade, force ownership's hand. And I got to be honest, I mean, if I'm the Kings, I don't even think there's a big drop-off. I mean, I win 28 games with him. What's the drop-off going to be without him? I mean, I don't think... I mean, it all comes down to basically the principle that today's NBA has changed. Centers don't translate to wins the way that they used to. It's a wing-guard league now. Having centers is nice, but DeMarcus Cousins, Al Jefferson's, Dwight Howard's, those aren't the focal points you're building your teams around. It's the same thing, I mean, why I thought Julie Okafor should not have gone, been drafted by the Lakers. D'Angelo Russell is today's NBA, not Julie Okafor. The game has changed, and man, when we look around now what the Kings are building with with Rondo, now with Cousins, I really think that potential has, that, that could be a very, very dangerous situation. You already have Cousins who, with Carl and him, absolutely are not on the same standing with one another. There's, I think... What happened this summer before the NBA draft with all that talk, that relationship is is just spoiled. Now you bring in a guy like Rondo who is notorious. 
He has feuded with Doc Rivers. He feuded with Rick Carlisle. You know what both those guys have? NBA championship rings on their finger. And then now you've got going to a guy like George Carl, well, he doesn't have a ring on his finger, but he's a guy who has as much experience as anybody. If he can't get along with Doc Rivers and Rick Carlisle, how in the world is he going to get in the, get along with George Carl? At the end of the day, just Rondo is not the kind of guy I want around my franchise. And for the Sacramento Kings, who are an organization who need to get as far away from players like Rondo as possible, I think it's a horrible signing. Now, it is a one-year deal, so it's not the end of the world on that. But man, again, you've got to just think at the end of the day about the mindset of the players that you have. Is combining Rondo with Cousins the best idea in the world? I don't think so. Now, Cousins has cooled off quite a bit. Early in his NBA career, he was definitely a loose can. I mean, the te he always racking up the technical fouls. He was always getting himself in a little bit of trouble. And he did a nice job of cooling off, maturing a little bit. But, man, I mean, you look at the way things have shaped off for the Sacramento Kings this offseason, and I just don't think that the relationship between Carl and him can survive or can thrive. And it's unfortunate for Carl because I really like George Carl. I think he's a great NBA coach. I really think he's done a lot of great things in this league. But, I mean, man, when, you, when you're surrounding a, guy, a coach with a guy like Rondo who's going to have to – be the floor general, be the general of the team, and then another guy like DeMarcus Cousins who really doesn't get along with you as it is, that has potential, that is disaster written all over. The, the West as it is, is completely stacked. I know the Kings ownership group, I mean, really, really thinks that they're in position to win, but they're not. It just, at the end of the day, like I said at the top of this segment, there are segment, there are patterns to professional basketball. Certain teams display these patterns more than others. The Kings are one of those. There's a pattern of losing. It is a culture of losing, and I do not see that culture of losing ending. And it, it just it, a lot of it comes down to decision making. When you pairing when you're pairing guys like Cousins with guys like Rondo, that is not a good pairing. In 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 between it all, you have George Carl who there is not a good relationship with right now. Now, I just, it's a mess. It really is. I mean, I don't know what, what you do here. I mean, trading Cousins, I know the the owner, the, the King's owner just has no, it did not ever want to do that. He, I mean, I could see why you would be enthralled with his talent, but at the same time, you've got to look at it. Yeah, this guy's putting up big numbers. This guy's doing great things. But it doesn't translate to wins. You're winning 28 games. You're not going to win more. It just It's a tough spot to be in. And I know the Kings do have a pretty nice fan base there. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough situation to be in. But it just comes down to decision making. You're not making good decisions. When you're an organization, as an organization, you make the decisions. You know who makes decisions as an organization? The Miami Heat. The Miami Heat have a lot of championship pedigree to them. Pat Riley, a guy who makes good decisions. Pairing Rondo with DeMarcus Cousins. You think Pat Riley, a guy like Pat Riley would have done that? I don't think so. It's just, at the end of the day, you've got to be smarter than the room. And the Kings are just not smarter than the room. It, it's not a good situation. Just, I'm not a fan of Rondo. I don't ever... Again, you've got to think of it. Think of it like a CEO of a of a Fortune 500 company. Are you gonna want a guy leading your company who's gonna be cause problems with other other business partners? Going to turn other people off? Going to be difficult to deal with? Absolutely not. And it's the same thing in professional sports. If you're a quarterback, if you're a point guard, if you're worried about your point guard blowing up the locker room, causing problems, rift with the coach, do all those things sound like something that you want? Absolutely not. I know, again, it's a one-year deal, but I stick stay as far away from Rondo as possible. Again, there's a reason that the Sacramento Kings signed Rondo and a team like the Lakers did not. The Lakers have their problems too, but they're smarter than the room, and they're not touching a guy like Rondo. 
Not a fan. Never have been. Thought his game's always been overrated, and more than anything, I don't need that mentality messing up the chemistry of my team. And if you're an organization like the Kings, who just, you, you don't need that. But they have him. And I got to be honest, I think that the, the results are not going to prove very well for the Sacramento Kings. Tough times, though, in Sacramento. Don't go anywhere. I'm up against the clock, but we'll be back again soon. And, uh, man, there's just so much to talk about. And I'm in my glory over here, folks. Don't go anywhere.